Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Click Plus data logging. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there'll be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There'll be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So we're now looking at the data logging capability of our Click Plus PLC. Now data logging is the collection of data over time. This is usually used for data analysis at a later time. And the amount of data in the system information stored and the frequency of the storage will depend on your specific application. The hardware used to store the data is usually called a data logger. Using the information from our last post, the MQTT information collected, which is the temperature in Atlanta and the click analog, will now be logged two different ways. A micro SD card on the Click Plus will be used to store the data every minute in an S or a CSV or comma separated value file. And also Node Red will be used to store the same data in an SQL database. Let's get started on how to use these data loggers. So up on my screen here, what you will see is we have our Click Plus um, our Click programming software running right now. We're currently at version 3.01 and the logger information will only work on version 3.00 or above. So you must upgrade if you have a, a previous version. And if we actually look at our hardware that we have here, you will see that we have our Click Plus PLC and it is our, um, our higher model, which is a C2, which also has our, our SD card right here logging. You also see there we have an SD light indicator right here. We're using the same program as before so we have our analog input right here and if temperature if the analog is bigger or greater than the uh, temperature in Atlanta we have our first output uh, on that we have here. And we are currently connecting wirelessly to our MQTT network as well as any of the logging that we're going to be doing. So that's our hardware. And if we look at the program, the program really hasn't changed at all in terms of the ladder logic. And we, would, we don't really need ladder logic change at all doing the uh, data logging to our SD card. So the first thing we do is if we go to um, our function tab in our navigator, you will see that we have a data logging setup. And um, what you'll see here, I'll just move that up. There you go, data logging setup. And here is our data logging setup screen. And what we do is we enable this data logging. Our log trigger bit will be SC8, which is actually our one minute flag. So every one minute, it'll log the flag to log. And then over here, file creation, we're gonna use one file and create it when the log, log bit is entered. So what I'll do is create a log of this information. You will see here, here's our, all our system addresses that we will use. You have this, the uh, SD eject, delete all, uh, copy system ready to use, and uh, the status and the errors. So we will be monitoring those. And then we have our actual data to log. The first thing is we date and time. Now this is usually very important when you're doing data logging is to have a date and time in order to uh, know exactly when that event happened or that data was collected. In our format, you can see we, we can choose several different ones. I like using the year, month, day so that if the information is coming in and we're not sure, we can easily um, organize that so that we can get in in a sequential order. And then our time, hour, minute, second. So then our first data is we were going to give it a header called click analog and it comes from df1 and our format here we're going to give it uh, two decimal places then we have our, our temperature in atlanta or atlanta temp and it comes from df10 and again we're going to give it two decimal places all right so that is it for actually uh, saving or to do the data logging. And you see it saves to our CPU SD card. It's going into, into the click plus directory under log and then log uh, comma separate value CSV. So we just say okay. And then what we do is we transfer this down to the 
uh, PLC. And once we do, we can then start logging this data. So we've done that already. So we can call up our data view and calling up our data view. Here is our older program here. You can see that we're connected to our M2QT broker. And going down here, you can see that we have our eject. So if we turn on our eject. This is how we would then uh, get the data out of the controller. Turn that on and what you'll see is array to use now turns off. So now we know that we can now look at our hardware and you'll see now that our SD light is now off. We can now take this card out and we can put this into our computer and call up our uh, information in our computer and it will actually be our uh, it'll, it'll actually be uh, let's see here we go here we go this will be our um, here we go you'll get the log data similar to this and it is showing our comma separated value this is just in a spreadsheet using uh, WPS office. So you can see here's my temperature, my time, date, my analog, and my uh, temperature in Atlanta. If I look down, you can see how it can change over time, and we get different values here. You also notice that my date is incorrect because the date actually comes from the, the Click PLC itself. So if we want to change that date, we have to do so by the Click PLC. So let's just close that down. And then what you'll notice also, if I take that same card and I Put it back into my click plc light comes on and what you'll see is it's ready to use and we're off and running again so very easily to stop and start it all right let's close that and well, as we said before if we needed to uh, change the time and date then what we want to do is look at plc calendar adjust and we can adjust this to say, okay, set it to the current value that we see on my PC, right? The PLC and close. So that's as easy as it gets when, when uh, setting our calendar clock area. So the other way that we can do is actually, you'll see this SD control, and we can also use it as, as opposed to our data view. And over here in our data, data control, we can actually hit eject and you sure you want to stop it with the data? Yes, we are. Operation complete. So now what I can do is I can now, you can see my lights off. I can take that card back out again. Pop that out. And we'll just hit close there. And then we can pop that card back in. And once we do, again, the data logging will continue to, to operate. And if I go back to my SD control center, and once again, you will see that everything's all ready to go and I can do my delete again. I should also do other information like I can with the bits in that the, our data view, which is to delete all the data on the card. We can copy the system files, etc. Okay, so that's the, that's the first part. The next part, what we'll do is take a look at um, the SQL uh, Lite database setup. So here's my SQL Lite. And here I've created a, uh, a database called Click, Data, or Click Plus Database. And in there, what I've done is I've added a table. And the table contains the value date, which is a double uh, date time. We have a click analog, which is a double, which gives us our position, um, our two decimal places that we, we bring in. And we have our temperature, which is also a double. So we've set up this database and it's a, a SQL light uh, studio that we're using version 3.3.3 .3 and we've we've uh, covered this in a previous uh, information on how to actually install this and we'll give you links in, in the description below here so once we have that then what we'll do is uh, we'll call up our uh, node red here we go and under the node red what you'll see is again we've added our MQTT information to SQLite database. And under node red, if we go over here, we go to our um, manage palette, 
and under manage palette you will see that we have our SQLite already installed here. Close that. So what we're doing is we're going to add a function key off of our analog signal and that function key will allow us to um, create a variable called analog that we will use on our um, storage of our data. So we set up this variable and this is set for the flow. So that gives you a scope of the variable. Then what we do is, uh, so once we have that analog coming in from our MQTT, then what we're going to do is set up an, inj or an inject. Move that up a bit. Our inject here. And our inject is going to take the message payload now, which will give us our time and date in the format that we want. And we're going to inject this after one second when everything starts. And we're going to repeat it at an interval. And let's just re repeat it right now at uh, uh, one second. Get it done. Then what we'll do is we will look at our function. And our function, what we do is we use SQL or SQL commands, and we're going to insert into um, the click plus. We're going to insert the um, to the date, click analog, and click our Atlanta temperature values. And it's going to be our, our message payload, which is our time date. Then we're going to use parse float, and we're going to get our analog value from our click. And then we're going to do the temperature, which will be their temperature in Atlanta. So that's going to store those data every second. And then finally, what we do is we specify our database, which is going to be in our D drive under SQLite, and it's going to be the click plus database.db, which we created using our SQL Lite Studio. And then what we'll do is just deploy that. And currently right now, we are injecting that data right now, and we're going to be storing up into our SQLite database. So just to make sure that we have that value, we'll look at our data in here and we'll just refresh this data. And you can see now, if I double click this to go the other way, you can see right now that I am actually bringing that data in. Refresh that again. And there it is. So very easy to, to accommodate for a lot of data and storage of data, both as a comma separated value, as well as a, a SQL database. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.